Welcome to the Instinctive Influencers Podcast, a show where influence becomes one of your tools for success. Now, here are your hosts, Brian Weber and Ed Haley. Hi, I'm Brian. And I am Ed. And this is the Instinctive Influencers Podcast, episode 50. Here we are, Ed. We're 50 episodes in. I can't believe it, man. It's like, and we're almost, we're coming up on that one year mark too. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, the way it has all come together and they do all the different things that we've done and with the topics we've gone over, man, tell us, what are your thoughts? Tell us what are your thoughts? Um, <laughs> it has been interesting. I mean, the, the, the episodes, the research episodes, the figuring out schedules, you know, with you being in the Korean peninsula and actually, so yeah, so with you moving and then me being in the European theater, it has just been, um, it's been an adventure. It has taken some resilience on both of our parts, but you know, as long as we have great listeners out there, I mean, and, and we're having any kind of impact, it's been worth it. Yeah, I mean, and you think about it. Not only were, are we in like two totally different geographical locations, but also the amount of work that we also have to do during the day. It keeps us busy. Plus, are you still doing school? Uh, let's put it ish on that. Uh, <laughs> well, you you have school ish. I'm also doing school, so it's like all these different things that keep that just piled up, and it's almost like it's almost like you and I have this glutton for punishment. It's like, yeah, let's just pass some more on that plate, you know? So, well, I mean, as we record this, we are on the eve of Veterans Day, and uh, I feel like as veterans, it's one of the things we're taught is to just enjoy the punishment and keep moving forward and working hard. Uh, you, you know, and it's funny that you're saying we're on the eve of Veterans Day, but here we are. This is going to be released a few weeks later, so we're going to be well past what is actually being yeah. released on Veterans Day, which was that Rick Williams and F- Quentin Furman. Uh, I guess group discussion. I wouldn't really call it an interview. I think it was more of a group discussion that we I'm telling you, man, what a great episode that was. I'm just and I'm excited to see like how much further we take this. I mean, you think we're at fifty. I can't imagine what one hundred well, I'm I'm planning one hundred's gonna be another Q and A, but hey, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see when we get there. Hopefully, uh you know, uh we might be flying cars by then. Who knows? I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Uh the the <laughs> The Rick Williams and uh, Quentin Furman episode was a lot of fun. I mean, man, but we've had a lot of great times this year. We've had some great guests, some interviews. Um, You know, I actually go back and listen to some of the early episodes, and I'm like, oh, man, we've come a long way. We've we've done mic changes over the course of the first 50 episodes. So, you know, we've had we've had some uh, we've had some milestones. And not to mention you and I just sat here just a few minutes ago before we even hit record and we kind of hashed out the rest of the episodes to the beginning of the new year. And I'm excited about getting those knocked out. I mean, everything from the, the sibling one you're going to do to the, <laughs> the Christmas ones that we're talking about to the new year's one that we're going to do like right on the 31st. I mean, there's some really good stuff we're getting. Plus on top of that, I, I mean, some of the stuff like your wife gave us a great idea. She put it on the, uh, the closed Facebook group page about, uh, doing an episode on empathy. I'm like, why haven't we done that yet? You know, why wouldn't we discuss that? I mean, this just, and I've got a list of, I probably have a list of, I don't know, 65 different topics we can hit upon. And just the other day, I'm sitting there, I was reading something. Uh, actually, General Abrams was, he made a comment about, uh, it was on it was on Twitter and it, the comment was about uh, how people ask him how he was so successful. And then he said, well, I surround myself by certain types of people. And he had certain key words in there. And I was like, we could do an episode about just those key words and how those make you successful. I mean, it's just, there's so much out there. I'm, I am proud to say that at some point I worked for General Abram. So now I feel like I was one of those key people, even though I was a private and he had no idea who I was. But now I feel like I was one of those key people he surrounded himself with. I would definitely tell you, uh, if you don't follow him yet on Twitter, try it. He's he's a riot. He he is not scared to put stuff on there that you know has meaning. Uh, it's motivational. It's just different things. Of course, I mean, I mean, it's General Abrams. Come on, dog faced soldier. That's what he is. Uh, 
Son of the tank. Yeah, exactly. Son of the tank. Yeah. All right, hey, Ed, we've got about 22 questions here. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did I just say 22? I can't believe this. I didn't even realize yeah. that. Did, did you realize that when, when I sent this to you? I sent you, there's a 20 on the one page and then the, the two in the discussion here. Yep. Out of the, That's crazy, man, how that always gets us every time. So we got to do all 22, that means. Man, that's a lot of, of talking. Let's see what we can get to, though. Uh, I think we'll be. I think some of it's going to be short and easy questions. All right. So I'm going to start it off right now. Here we go. What are you curious about right now, Ed? What am I curious? So at this point, this is crazy. At this point in our career, right, both of us over 20, retirement is somewhere in the future. Um, that That's probably what I'm most curious about. I wish I, I'm very curious about what my life with my wife, what, what, what retirement's going to look like for us. So I've always been, you know, I've been curious about that for a few years, probably since I hit the 18 year mark. Um, so we're a few years away from that, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty curious about that. I'm, I'm anxious about it even. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I, you know, I, I, I think, uh, I think you have the right, uh, the right reason to be brother. I mean, you think about it, this, it's been a long path. So, I mean, and then on top of it, this, this show is like opened up a whole new like, gateway of stuff to kind of look into and be like, wow, you know, I really didn't realize that. So yeah. I can definitely tell you my curiosity, it, it seems to change by the week almost. But right now, I think my biggest curiosity is that next duty station I'm going to be going to and, you know, the next job and the type of people I'll be around and how can I probably, you know, definitely be a better influencer and leader in that organization you know so definitely man that's awesome yeah that i mean that's a good one too and that's one of those stressors right like yeah i'm in europe which i actually heard a rumor i haven't seen anything in writing that you can now more easily extend to stay in europe but i'm in europe and i know currently it's 36 months and then i'm gonna have to go somewhere else um, back to the States or, you know, it could be Korea, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, that that's, a, that's an anxious moment for us. Right. Like I remember, you know, just over a year ago I was coming to Jury Germany and I was so curious about like, what was it going to be like in Germany? And, uh, it's been an amazing experience and, and I'm sure that your experience when you move on will be amazing and awesome. And you'll be back with those great kids of yours and your wonderful, uh, your wonderful wife. You know, I was just thinking also something I'm curious about, Ed. I'm, I'm curious about that uh, that siblings throwdown. I want to hear that episode. I'm pretty stoked by it, by the way. <laughs> I I am too. I am too. I'm I'm interested in it because uh, the location of recording it is going to be different. Like we're going to be literally traveling with the microphone and recording it in Ireland. So that's going to be uh, unique. Um, and I think that'll be fun uh, as well. So, yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward to that one, of course. I, I always look forward to Thanksgiving, which I think we're going to talk about that in a little bit. All right. So what's next? You see anything next? Uh, let's see what we get. Well, I mean, I let it. I let into it. Let's do it. Do you have a favorite holiday and why? So, obviously, I just let us into this. So, uh and you're going to hear a lot about this on the uh, on the sibling episode. You're going to hear about it. But so my brother and sister and I are stubborn, like our mother and our father. And we went through a patch where we weren't speaking. And it really it all culminated in this sibling throwdown, which has now become an annual event where we all get together for Thanksgiving. Now, there have been times where my sister was deployed. So uh, she Skyped in for that. Um, you know, there's last year I wasn't able to make it. We were here in Germany, but we always find a way to like at least talk or, or, you know, video chat and whatever. So Thanksgiving has always been super special to me. Now this year is even more special because we're going to be traveling, but that's not really the reason. The real reason this holiday is so special to me this year is, uh, my nephew Braden was born last year. In October, so for Thanksgiving, I wasn't there. So this is my first Thanksgiving with my nephew, Braden. This is the first opportunity I have as his uncle to plant that seed of the importance of family and this uh, Thanksgiving tradition. And my vision is that one day him and his siblings and 
his cousins all get together and continue this, you know, well beyond my brother, sister, and I, you know, uh, uh, being the host. You know what I mean, Brian? So Thanksgiving has been super special. My siblings and I are very, very close, and I really feel like this annual Thanksgiving thing is a huge factor in that. And this is the first year my wife doesn't have to jump through hoops preparing an amazing meal by herself almost <laughs> uh, for Thanksgiving. So, yeah, it's – it's. Th- Thanksgiving is easily my favorite one. And I like both of them, but the American Thanksgiving for my Canadian listeners, we do celebrate both. (laughs) Uh, Hey, so how old is the kid? Uh, Brandon turned one in October, so uh, should be fun. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And we left in October. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. That's. Yeah, so I went back home for an unfortunate, um, an unfortunate event, like a death in the family, and I got to meet him. Uh, however, my wife has not had the opportunity to meet the great Braden, who, by the way, he is named after uh, the Washington Capitals goalie, Braden Holpe. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. we're, big, we're big hockey fans yeah. in this family. Don't you know? So, yeah, my wife has it. This will be her first. This will be her first opportunity to meet him. But I, I just think that if he can grow up seeing this each year, like we are, we're already planning next year. We're kind of planning next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's like. uh it's like the Super Bowl. You know, you're watching the Super Bowl, and then they announce next year the Super Bowl will be held in. Um, so that's yeah. kind of where we're at. Like, they'll be here, and at some point during the visit, we'll decide, all right, next year you're hosting, and we're all flying or going to, you know, whichever, whether it be Charlotte or Pennsylvania or back to Europe, um, whichever route. Uh, so that'll be discussed and decided this year to look forward to next year. But wow. yeah. By far my favorite. How about you, Brian? What's your favorite holiday and why? We share the same holiday, brother. I man, I I've said it a few episodes back. I I've always loved Thanksgiving. It, I mean, I said it before too that Christmas was one of those things that comes and goes, and it's enjoyable. You know, when you have kids, you get to watch them light up and stuff. Or when you were a kid, you know, I remember one year Alf was really big, and I got like an Alf stuffed animal, and I thought that was really cool. But I was much younger. Um, but it's just something about Thanksgiving, man. Ever since I was little, I always loved Thanksgiving. In the beginning, I didn't really realize what it was about, you know, like people getting together, the family being together. <clears throat> Instead, back then, I, I just remember the food. I loved all the different foods, I, just so many different things. And and even now, you know, it's one of those things that I just, I, I enjoy getting to taste so many wonderful items. Uh, when we get together with Michelle's family, it's, I mean, it's just a smorgasbord of food and there's always a ton of stuff. And every year, uh, whether it be the Thanksgiving get together, or we also do a, a Christmas Eve one where we do more like finger foods, but every year Michelle and I are always like racking our brain. Like we want to try to bring something new, something that we've never had at it before food wise, pretty much almost every year her dad won't eat any of the things we bring because it's probably got something green in it and he he's really picky so but it's just you know it's fun it's fun to get together and just kind of i guess veg out unbutton the top button on your pants yeah. and uh, just relax <laughs> <laughs> but yeah definitely man so we share i think we share see that and that's what gets me ed like at some point i know you do the the siblings throwdown I have to get to it at some point. I, I'm, I'm just saying, once it's have, it happens in the state, it's going to be have to be a must where like I'm going to have to come <laughs> and visit during it, just because. I, well, I mean, I don't know because we share the love of that holiday. You never know, Brian. I mean, I if I have to PCS, I, I never know if I end up in the same location as you. It could be like we've had, man, through the years we've had <clears throat> a lot of guests um, show up and you know invited, whether it be soldiers or co-workers um you know friends who are you know single parents um that just don't travel like that so they would come to the house actually this year um i even I, half jokingly because i would absolutely open my door but i had sergeant uh, richardson used to work for me or francis now she's a civilian and francis was talking about coming to europe and i said well you know the sibling throwdown is in europe this year so um I, I put that invite. She she came to several. So the other thing about our sibling throwdown that I'm sure you'll hear again and you've probably heard, we do pajama pants. You're not allowed to wear regular p- pants on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So at this point, these siblings of mine and my wife have this idea that we're going out to eat in Ireland in pajama pants. I have not bought in yet. <laughs> but apparently I have pajama pants I bought don't, for that reason. Uh, um, I don't know. Oh, yeah. man. I don't know like how the culture will take that. That's my <laughs> argument exactly. But <clears throat> that's one of those weird uh uh, traditions of our of our Thanksgiving, and they're trying to carry it on. And I mean, I could say, yeah, I'm not doing that, but then honestly, listen, yeah. my siblings and my wife yeah, say, yeah. hey, come on, I'm gonna be like, okay, I will. So we'll see. Um, yeah, we haven't picked the restaurant <laughs> yet either to host the dinner. I said we should host it at the Guinness yeah. Factory, but I don't think we can have Thanksgiving dinner just based off of some beer from the Guinness Factory. So we might have to. We might have to relook the location. <laughs> I think you should. I think you should. You know, I mean, yeah. some substance there. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and the crazy thing is that, like, just the banter back and forth. I, I've never even spoke with your brother or your sister. I've never talked with either one of them. Never on the phone. Never, you know, in person. Nothing like that. But the banter back and forth we have in our league with your brother, I, I enjoy it. Like, I literally just want to, you know, like, totally go after it, you know, with them and stuff. And I, I think because of how I get along with you, I think I would get along with them pretty well. It'd be fun. So, And two, hey, of, us, let's, two of us are giving you the smackdown on fantasy football too, right? Two of the three of us. I feel like, did my brother beat you? Guys, hey, yeah. Hey, you know what? I haven't, can, uh, haven't looked this week. Who's in first place overall? I didn't look this week. I think, yeah, I think you are. But uh, what did you tell me about first place? Hey, it's dangerous huh? in this league. I'm telling you, no, the, it's only been like one champion from first place. I'm, I'm trying to tank. I need to tank and get to about fifth place because that's where the title usually comes from. Yeah, this is my week to really tank because I uh, I had to do a bunch of substitutions. But I digress. <laughs> hey, here's the next one. All I right, like this I like this one, Ed, because I think this is going to be almost a. Uh, I think it's going to be a two part question for you, especially. Here's the uh -oh. question: Would you say you're more of an extrovert or an introvert? Are you going to answer first or you want me to answer? <laughs> I, I, I'm, what do you want? Hey, man, give it. Go. So I, this, everybody, know, everybody that knows me knows exactly what I am. I am both. I am both. I'm 100%. At work, I am 100% a, a, you know, extrovert, more outgoing, more social person. At home, I have gotten a lot better. And I think my wife would even give that to me ish. Like, you know, like we drove yesterday, we went to a, uh, so Christmas markets are the big rage up in, in Europe, and uh, they have a market right now uh, about an hour and some change from here, but it's not a Christmas market, but it's really a Christmas market. Like we went to it um, yesterday with some friends and we socialized, you know what I mean? So I'm getting better at being more extroverted in my personal life, but on the norm, I am not. In fact, I'm going to lunch or going to dinner tonight with one of my coworkers. In previous years, that probably would not have, eh, probably wouldn't have happened depending on who the person was. So that's one of my areas of improvement. My wife's always wanted me to improve on being a little bit more sociable uh, in my our personal life. And I am with her. <laughs> but, yeah, I am both. Uh, professionally, when I put that uniform on, I'm very much an extrovert. Um, I'm also more assertive in uniform as us in my civilian side. I'm more of an introvert and I'm a lot more passive. So, yeah, it's like, but I'm also a Gemini. So in fairness, I, you know what? I think you're, I think you're converting. I'm trying, <laughs> but I'm a Gemini. So I'm allowed to have the, the two sides, right? Like that's what we're known for uh, by our Zodiac sign. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and I, I, I seen a, I've seen a conversion of you kind of sort of, you know, like, like even over the past few years, I mean, shoot, we've known each other for, I don't know, five years, five, six years now, probably five yeah. years. Like we've known, known each other probably four and a half, but like, like a solid five to six years. And I think I've seen, I've seen uh, you're converting over. You're, you're becoming more comfortable with being uncomfortable, which by the way, I had a good friend of mine. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure he listens to the show. Uh, John Benia, he, a great guy, love the guy to death. Uh, actually, he is at the next duty station I'm going to, and him and his wife, he's older than I, he's by a couple of years, he and his wife are expecting another child. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like, hey, hey, I, I congrats to oh, them, man. I, I'm, I'm happy that they're populating the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I can't remember if this is his, 
this is number four or number five, but it's somewhere in there. <laughs> well, so. so you say I'm you say I'm converting, Brian, but so part of it is this show. Like, you know, the charisma was it the charisma yes. myth when we were talking about just striking up a random conversation uh with people and, and we we attempted that. So those are the things that this show, you know, is doing for me. So hopefully it's the same impact it's having on our listeners because I very much can a little it's a little easier to strike up a conversation. Now, in the environment I'm in, it's a little more difficult, right? Because if I go to the restaurant, I got to figure out if they speak English or German or, you know what I mean? So it's a little bit more difficult, but I still yes. can attempt. And, and I think that's the impact this show has had over me over the last 50 episodes, honestly. And, and that's exactly, that's why I think it, that's why I say it's a conversion type thing. You know, you're, you're building up, you, you were at one point not as open and vocal, but now you are. So, I mean, Hey man, it's rocking brother. Yeah, it's just part of my uh, lifelong learning process. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is, man. So that was a good one, Brian. What about you? So you already said Let's you're pretty see. much what? Yeah, we, we know that. I'm <laughs> extrovert all day long. I, yeah, I'm extrovert. I, I've been, I've been an extrovert for a very long time. I would definitely say high school football made me that back in the nine year, the early to or I'd say late to mid to late nineties. That's it just, it helped me kind of break out of my mold. Hey, listen, I got to be more vocal, be this person. It was always in there. I just <laughs> never let it do it. Now, shoot, I'll walk into any room and talk to anybody. I don't mind. Yeah, it doesn't no, bother it, me. That's interesting. So, all right. All right. What, what's all is it my turn? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Wait, this, what's I'm, another I'm, good one? I'm giving myself a softball. <laughs> yeah, what's another good question we have on this list? What is your favorite thing about your current job? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going, so we're going, I'm going, uh, I'm deep diving more than my military job, which first of all, again, even veterans day as we record this and it's going to come out sometime uh, later, but um being in the military means everything to me. I love the idea of serving people um, and, and doing a job to help people, whether it be, you know, I've done deployments for humanitarian aid. I've done, obviously, Operation Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom. So for the military side, I, I enjoy that. Now, my current job, I enjoy two things. I enjoy the travel, like, because I have the opportunity to travel uh, you know, all over Europe, at least once a month, if not twice a month. But the other thing goes back to the question we just was talking about, Brian. One of the things I enjoy is the opportunity to be an extrovert and more sociable, but with people from other countries and cultures. I like watching. So we've talked about before being people watchers. I like to see how a German Lieutenant Colonel responds when he walks in the room. What's he do? What's his technique? What? How's he greet people? Does he greet everybody? Does he only greet his rank or below? Does he only greet people that's senior to him? So I like that aspect of it, of watching the different cultures and, and you know, how they interact. So those two things are really big for me in my current, uh, my current assignment. How about you, Brian? What is your favorite thing about your current job? But tell us overall. First, you got to go military, and then you can deep dive. All right. Um, so military-wise, I think it allowed me to kind of uh, develop the person I am. I really do. Like uh, When I say that, I mean is in leadership. Like that, I don't know. There's something about it. For instance, I could have I could have tried to go and become an officer. I could have tried to uh, just put in a pack and become a warrant officer. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's people out there right now who do that. And I'm totally – I support them 100%. But staying enlisted and being a senior enlisted person in the United States, Army, it's just – there's something about it that's so, I don't know, amazing – and it's so uh, it's just so satisfying, and just the things that we do and we get to do. I mean, we get to travel around the world. All of, obviously, some of the times we go, it's not for good reasons. Uh, but I, I never saw myself. I'm not joking, Ed. When I think about this in high school, I didn't see myself sitting in a foreign country doing some type of important role or, or, or job or whatever. I I just didn't see that, you know. Uh, but I guess 
army wise, it's just awesome to serve. Um, and then, and then the connections you make, like, whew, man, and I'm not just talking about the ones you make in the service. It's the people that you meet and you didn't even know they served until they come up and they congratulate you or say something to you because they seen you in uniform. And then they say, yeah, well, you know, I'm really proud to be one of your brothers or something like that. And then you find out that they did, they went to Nam or this or yeah. that. And, and you get to learn something about them that not everyone gets to learn about them because they're not always going to talk to somebody else about it. It's just like that. Feel, that's just awesome. Um, it is. So it, it absolutely is. It, exactly. I mean, you just said to me, you just said to me before we got started, is that you have a new Facebook friend. Who is your new Facebook friend? Uh, my new Facebook friend is Helen Ayers Patton, the granddaughter of General George S. Patton. Um, met her at a, at a ball last year and uh yeah so she's my my new facebook friend so pretty much i'm i'm like bestie you- no i'm not really but i did meet her and she's a very wonderful <laughs> yeah. person she does a lot of work for the Patton foundation she does a lot of work with those veterans that are still around from world war ii and those are the key things that you know so she's a great connection to that because i mean i've gone uh, I don't know if I said on the show, but I had to go. Why well, did I have to go? I volunteered to go to the airport and help World War II veterans who are doing a tour over here for anniversaries that are going on this year. And I went to help them. Just basically, you got their baggage and put it on the bus. And if they were in a if they were in a wheelchair, you could push them in their wheelchair. They had a lot of like the golf cart things you see in the airport carrying them around. And then you got to help them get up so that they could go, like, you know, use the latrine before their bus ride. But you also got, like, probably about 30 minutes of interaction just to chat with them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, um, yeah. crucial. Like, that generation and, and and the things they say is, is pretty funny, too. Of course, you get away from a little yeah. more when you're over 80 or 85. But <laughs> yeah, so, and then we got another one coming up uh, about two months from now. Well, yeah, about two months from now. No, not quite is the 75th anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge in Bastogne, Belgium. So you know oh, I will be man. up in that vicinity. I'm going up there, yeah. So now we're talking not just these veterans, but 101st guys like you and I, Brian, and, and where they fought and where General Patton came and relieved them. So, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, interesting. I, I, I like the veteran community, though. I'm so jealous, man. I so would love to go there with you. That's just <laughs> awesome. Uh, but l- let me let me tag the last part that you had uh, – you said my current job. So I would definitely say my current job is very satisfying or my favorite part about it is the responsibility that I have to be there for all those soldiers. And then I have a large number of them and it's, you know, when they achieve something and they say, you know, they just say thank you to you. I mean, even that, like that is like, that's really gratifying. You know, um, I took on this job. We had, we got about 15 people that couldn't pass our APFT. Currently we have three. One of them was a recent failure. So to tell you the truth, of the 15, there are two left. Uh, then we added, you know, added the one and then, but, and to tell you the truth, I truly believe one of those two about to take a PT test this, uh, this coming up week. And that person is going to pl- pass with flying colors. I know, I know she will. So, um, it's but it's just feeling. so gratifying, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. that you're helping somebody do something better for themselves, you know, and, and see that fight in them. I it's nothing like seeing the fight in the soldier. I love it. So, but yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely uh, my answer. Favorite thing about my current job. All right, here we go. What is your go-to order at your favorite hometown restaurant, Ed? Hometown restaurant. Oh, come on. I'm a Maryland guy. So we're going hometown, right? I'm from Maryland. We are known to have the best the best crabs in the entire world. Like, come on, Maryland blue crabs. So if I went to a restaurant, I'm probably going to get, if I can't get (laughs) hard shell crabs, I am getting crab cakes. Uh, I do not like soft shell crabs. I just can't get by the texture and and what they are, but I do like uh, a good meaty, real meat crab cake. Not that imitation garbage uh, with some little bit old bay. Oh man. Man, you're making me hungry, Brian. Mm. But yeah, as a Maryland mm-hmm. guy, the other thing that is very uh that is very unique to the region where I'm from is chicken wings. But it's not the chicken wings, it's the sauce. 
So there's a sauce. If you're from the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, it's called Mambo sauce. It's so good. Um, it's like a, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like a spicier, sweet and sour kind of. Uh, but, yeah, chicken wings and mambo sauce is also a big thing for me when I if I go home and go to the Chinese restaurants because that's where you get that at. So, But I would my number one would be crabs, mm. some kind of crab, crab cake, hard shell crabs, a dozen crabs, two dozen crabs, whatever. But definitely crabs. And for you, Brian, that's funny. Well, <laughs> we share another love, brother. We share another love for seafood. You, you also love, love Maryland love crabs. Oh uh, no, nope. which is also like, what you guys are like known for. <laughs> Maine lobster, and I said it correctly, lobster. Um, With yeah, the A, man, okay. I, I love, oh, I love anything that has Maine lobster in it. Uh, you, you name it, I love it. it. But I don't have a particular favorite hometown restaurant. I guess you could say um, because. It's, you know, I I just no, nothing in particular strikes me. But if I can get a good lobster roll somewhere, man, all day long. Oh, that, matter of fact, as a matter of fact, while we were in Disney World, uh, it was crazy. My wife, because uh, we got to select some restaurants up front and get to go to them. While we mm-hmm. were there, one particular day, no joke, Ed, all three of my meals had lobster in it. All three. And I purposely, I, I had, I had checked <laughs> I the menus prior. <laughs> I don't either. I had, I had lobster at breakfast. I had lobster at lunch, and I had lobster at dinner. And I loved it, man. It's just, just something about good lobster. And I don't. That's the thing, man. I don't get to eat it that much. I really don't because you know mm-hmm. where we live in Tennessee, and now where we're about to move in Colorado. It's not like I'm gonna, you know, there's not a that's not a big market there. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, it's yeah. it's definitely something. So yeah. i I share a I share a passion for seafood <laughs> with you because there are other things too from the sea that I, I enjoy scallops. I love crabs and all that stuff. But it's something about just the lobster that is my favorite. Okay, well, and you know, it's too because with seafood, I feel like you can really tell when it's not fresh. So I, like, I can't eat crabs if I'm in Tennessee because there's no way it's fresh. You already know it's not fresh, and you'll see these restaurants these restaurants and they'll say maryland crab cakes you're like come on yeah frozen maryland crab cakes maybe so yeah i, I don't usually uh mess with it. actually there's a place here that sells maryland crab cakes in germany and i know they're not fresh um you know you said restaurant oh, no so I, if I, I i missed the restaurant so the restaurant my sister took me to and i'm not even 100 percent certain this restaurant's still there she took me to this restaurant it's called gilligan's on the pier it is so good because at the time when we went, she can order all you can eat shrimp. I can order all you can eat crab and we can share, you know, some all you can eat. So like, no, you got to eat yours and they got to eat theirs. Um, right. But no, at Gilligan's on the pier, you could share. Well, if you sit outside, you're literally on the water, on the bay. You can look out oh. and you got the water there and you got a beach with volleyball courts and they got like tiki bars and. It was a nice, like, back-in-the-cut place. I have not been there in many years um, and my because my wife doesn't eat shellfish, so that's the other problem. I can't really take her when we go, but, yeah, that would be the restaurant. Crabs would be the meal, Brian. Wow, that's awesome, brother. Yeah. So that was a good yeah. one. Yeah. I see we're staying at the uh, – right now – It's your turn. Pick one, pick one of those ones. Yeah, I notice we're staying in the top ten right now. Uh, with all of our questions so i'm just going to drop down first one that my eyeballs hey, lays on to uh hey, what Ed, before you- we go any further uh oh <laughs> yeah before we go any further because you and i both have uh messages you know different things we wanted to read also oh. throughout, and i think this would be a good point to kind of hit upon one um i had two you had one that you want to read we read i read the one before but i got this one i wanted to read um and I took he he actually sent me a couple different messages, so I kind of okay. put them all together. Like they they were all through message, Facebook Messenger, but I, it just kind of kind of resonates with me. Um, and for those of you listening, like sometimes that's what happens. Like Ed or I will receive a message from somebody, and a lot of times it's sparked from something we've said on a podcast, and you you'll see why. All right, so here it is. And I'm not going to say who this is, but I guarantee you that individual when he hears me read it, he'll know it was him. Uh, I'm digging the podcast. Probably the most impact I had was my time with you in the first arm position as we shut down 159. I 
I notice correcting leaders in front of their soldiers is something that you really evolved in in the time I was around you. In episode 32, you mentioned talent management, or Ed did, but that was one thing I learned from you, which was to use my people to help me in my own weaknesses, for instance, writing, and learn from them on how to do it. You literally taught me that was what I was good at and to focus on that. So yeah, this guy, uh, I, I just thought, I thought it was a great point. I was trying... And I and I specifically remember talking to him about it. He's a, he's a networking guy. He's really good at networking people, putting people together, and just he's really good at also just kind of figuring out who knows who, so he can connect that that connect those dots. And I told him, I said, man, I said, you're you're. He often would try. He used to try to like. It seemed like you would try to uh, do things that was kind of out of his wheelhouse, sort of speak. And Mm -hmm. I said, man, you know, you're really good at this. Why don't you really concentrate on that more? So now it's him looking at other people's talents and then connecting them to the right job or the right person or whatever. And that's what he tries to do. And it really made me happy. I mean, he went on, he's, he did a few different things. He actually, not too long ago, um, actually rather recently, uh, over the past few months, he did a, a, a massive breast cancer awareness motorcycle ride down in the Alabama, Florida area, which was really, really cool. I mean, just to put that together and to get sponsors out there and to, and, and basically, you know, kind of bring awareness to it, which is a very, very important issue. Uh, but it's just the fact that he did that. And he, he explained to me, you know, how he used that ability to do networking to put the event together. And, and I thought, man, that's just, what a great message he sent me. And, and he still sends me messages all the time. So I just want to say, hey, thanks for uh, the message. Yeah. You ready, Ed? Yeah, yeah. These messages mean a lot. So this message I'm going to read is from a young man. And, uh, you know, we call I call him Huey or we call him a lot of things, but I call him Huey. But so with this young man, <clears throat> we were at Fort Hood, my wife and I, and give you a little backstory. <clears throat> and I had just come back from deployment. I did not know this young man yet. And they gave him to me to work in my section. He was a mechanic, but they're going to have him do logistics with me instead. And he he was a younger guy. But what ends up happening is, you know, we bowl together. We play video games together. It starts to evolve into like this uh, um, kind of surrogate um, parental figure for him. Uh, both of us, you know, and, and it was good because he, at the time, you know, he was by himself. He had left home. He missed home, which was the beautiful Island of Hawaii. And uh, one of the things before his, you know, this message means a lot, but one of the other things, his mom once thanked us for looking after him. So we, you know, he is one of the ones I, I early as an early leader, I crossed the line and kind of he was more of a friend than my soldier, but he was pretty good at, at separation. So he is also the one that gave me my nickname, which has stood the test of time still around. Uh, <laughs> he, he used to call <laughs> me. So in personal time, he would call me big nasty. And at work, he would still call me sergeant. Uh and it comes from being in the field and, and trapped in a van. Uh, it was raining. We were sleeping in this van. And I had too much of that chocolate milk that doesn't <laughs> expire. And I had some I had some intestinal issues and some flatulence. And he ended up wanting to sleep in the rain <laughs> rather than stay with me. And this is where the big nasty comes from. And then we bowled. So, you know, I'm a bigger guy and we bowled. So end up being my little, uh, my moniker for bowling. And, uh, and it's just carried through time. But uh, this guy taught me to be a leader as my subordinate. He was one of my early challenges. It was him and another guy named Pagan and, and another soldier. Her name was Wallace. And they taught me because like I said before on earlier episodes, you know, Hey, you're in charge. Here's these people. Oh, there was another guy, Gotai. He's a, he got out the army, but so those guys taught me how to be leaders and they weren't trouble soldiers. Thank goodness. Right. Like these aren't, uh, you know, DUIs and beaten spouses and they has their own individual unique challenges. But so when I make the list for master sergeant recently to be promoted to master, 
Uh, Huey sent me this message, and, and I really like to read it. So it says, hate to get all mushy, but it's been a long time coming. You are hands down the foundation that slowly created the man I've become today. I know it was a pain in the butt, but I never got to thank you for putting up with me and taking me in all those years ago. Words can never express how grateful I will always be and how I will be forever in debt to you for all you have done and taught me. This occasion is truly joyous one, and I wish you the best. I couldn't think of a better person, Big Sarge, and friend to hold the prestigious rank of Master Sarge. Congratulations again, Big Nasty. And he, that's how he would say yeah. it, too, Nasty. Uh, <laughs> but he was just a <laughs> so. I think what happened with him, Brian, is he was just such a good kid. Um, he ended up getting out of the military. Um, much later, he had to get med boarded. And he is in the, I believe he's in actually the Fort Carson area now. He's probably working contract on post. So you may even run across this young man, but the words in that message to me, what it meant was this is recognition. Like Huey hasn't worked for me since 2007, eight. So we're talking, you know, 10, 11 years at least, or 11, 12 years at least. And I think him to take time to type a message like that, uh, it meant a lot. And I can tell you that every, maybe not every year. I think it's every year though. I'm going to go every year. My wife will correct me. He calls my wife or messages my wife to wish her a happy mother's day every year. Like this is the impact he had on us and the impact we had on him. So yeah, it, it, it's an excellent message, Brian. I'm very, uh, I was very happy to receive it. And hopefully one day, you know, him and I'll cross paths again. That's awesome, man. That I, I just I love it. I, I love it when people, you know, reach out and say stuff. I mean, it you know, it it it's there may be some self gratification there with it, like, you know, it's just nice to hear, but at the same time, it's nice to know that some somebody's doing really well and they wish best on people. All right, so I have one more, Ed. And this one, this is kind of cool, man. I mean, I I'm gonna read about it and stuff, but it's just so basically to give you an idea. I've got this guy, uh, he's he's in the medical field here, and he went home on leave not too long ago, and he just got back. While he was home on leave, this is what he wrote. He says, um, my daughter, 15 years old, <laughs> listens to podcasts, and I gave her your info while I was on leave. And here's what she said to me yesterday. This is, this is what this young lady says. She says, I'm listening to your guy's podcast right now, and it's super good. I was trying to listen to one the other day, but it was kind of <laughs> boring. But this one I'm listening to is about influencing being integrity. So I want to know what, first thing, I want to know what uh, one she felt was boring. Yeah. Just please let me know. Uh, she'll know that if she still listens, she'll know what we were talking about her. And, uh, and she'll know also that her dad's name, last name is Diaz. Uh, <laughs> I'll put that out there too. But, you know, I just, th- that's a 15 year old young lady, yeah. right? That That's a 15 year old listening to a podcast about becoming better. And, and this is, this is what I wrote back to him when he sent me the message. I love the brutal honesty opinion. Thanks for the support. That is awesome. The future of our country is the hands of our children. So we can only hope they find their personal influences and then become a great one themselves. The fact that your 15-year-old is seeking knowledge like this says a ton about her. I bet she is a natural leader, especially because she is your daughter. You know, I mean, that's... That's what I wrote back to him. But it's just messages like that, man. You know, like he didn't have to send that to me or anything. And like she was really, I mean, they were really in tune uh, with, she's, she liked the show. So that's what he says. So, I mean, I, I, yeah. I, that's, remember what we said before? If it reaches one person, that's all that matters. And it seems like we're reaching more than one, buddy. Yeah, it's crazy too. Cause I would not have, uh, you know, that's not the exact age of the audience I thought we would have, but I, I love the brutal honesty uh, of her too. And, you know, not only would I, I'd like to know not only, you know, which episode was it she thought was kind of boring, but what was it? What did, what did she think we could have done better? Uh, you know, we did an AR episode. Yeah. What, what, what could we have done better to yeah. improve it so we can avoid that and keep her as a good listener for us? So that's a challenge. If you're that 15 year old girl, you know who you are that, that reached out to your dad and told about it. Hey, Send us a message on the closed Facebook group. You know how to find it. One zero one influence. Come and, and just say, "Hey, Ed and Brian, 
it was me. Uh, this is what I thought. Tell us what you think. It does not hurt our feelings whatsoever. I love brutal honesty. Ed loves it too. And what we're all we're yep. gonna do is try to make things better from there. That's all we want to do. We, I'm not. I don't care. You tell me it was it was a worst sounding show ever, Brian. You should <laughs> shut up. Okay, gotcha. I mean, I may not shut up, but hey, whatever. All right, Ed. Are you ready to get back into those questions, man? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, let's go. Since we came out of that, that, that longer discussion, let's go. I'll go with something a little easier now. Um, are you more of a work to live or a live to work type person? Ooh, that's a man. That's a, are you more of a work to live or a live to work? I, I think it's a day to day for me, bro. I really do. I, I, that's, I can't say I do either, just, just one side. Really? I mean, some days I feel like, some days I feel like I'm just working to live. And then there's other days it's like, I literally love working so much that I live to work. I it just, I think on my, on, I th- this is what I'd say on bad days, I'm work to live because I'm just there because I have to be. But on good days, I'm live to work. I guess that's that whole optimism, pessimism type look for me. Um, most days, I would definitely say live to work because I, lo- I love going to a job and doing something and hopefully making things better. But that's that one's tough, bro. Yeah. Like, well, it's hard to kind of like identify it for me. So and I think I interpret it a little bit differently than you. So I'm, I'm work to live. I work to provide for my family and survive. I was a live to work. Like that's all I cared about is what did I need to do in the office working late working on Saturday. So I'm, I'm looking at maybe at a different lens than you. Uh, when I was a junior leader, I would go in on Saturdays and work in the office for a couple of hours and not realizing that, you know, when I it was taken away from my family, which is where I say work to live. That's to me, work to live in my opinion is more of a focus on, living your life, being with your family, those things. So I just look at it a different lens, which is interesting. Uh, but your your point makes complete sense too, uh, you know, from the way you're looking at it. But yeah, that, that's when I read it, that's how I looked at it. Um, I, wow. Yeah, I looked at the live to work as that guy that that's all they care because there's people out there and I've, I've, I've worked with people like that now. They will work, you know, 14, 15 hour days. They will go home and work. They'll take their computer and work on weekends. And um, the value added from all of that is not significant enough that it's worth compromising time with your loved ones, in my opinion. So that's I I just looked at it different. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. I got a good one for you. Here it is, man. Ready? Yeah. You just finished an interview for your dream job and happen to find a lottery ticket on the ground that will pay you $10 million. What oh, do you boy. Do? That's, 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 uh, hmm. you, I just got interviewed for my dream job. Well, it doesn't say I got the job for the dream job. I just finished an interview. Uh, so, yeah, so that's easy. That's easy. And I don't, I, I know what this person meant. But I'm going to use the loophole that I have found and say I'm going to wait to find out the results of that interview before I make a decision. <laughs> loophole, I like it. No, I mean that that's that's actually pretty close to my answer that I kind of come up with. Really yeah. is loophole. So I like it. <laughs> I, <laughs> so it, it, in the same manner, I to me, I'm one of those people like. I want to see if I get the job. If I got the job, I will keep with it until I no longer like doing it. And then I just, I'll be done. But yeah. my uh, two so weeks notice thing, be done because I got the money to do what I want. What do you now do I'm looking money, at it. Though? I'm looking at it a little bit different now, Brian. So now I'm going to talk about the money. Depending on what that dream job is. Yeah. Maybe I start my own business doing that same thing that that company does using that $10 million, I get a startup. So, you know, if it's something, I don't know, I'm just looking at, if it's microphone manufacturing is my dream job to work at (laughs) just because I'm looking at the microphone, maybe I start my own microphone manufacturing company out of that $10 million. Mm. I like it. Yeah, I like it a lot. Mine went a little bit different. 
because I also thought the same thing, man. I also thought about, okay, well, what would I do with the money? Um, so I know, and and in today's society, it's like they always, people say, oh, ten million is not ten million is not that much. Well, you know what? If I live the lifestyle I live now, it's gonna last me for quite a while. You know, uh, of course they say it's hard to do yeah, that. No, absolutely. Um, five of it goes, yeah, five five mil uh, right off the bat goes to uh, autism awareness and foundation to mm. help. You know, whatever it is to me, right off the bat, five million. It, yeah, it's okay. it's automatic. I I can't do anything else. I won't. I it's gonna go. Two and a half gets invested uh, to to live. You know, basically, you make investments to live off of. The other two and a half, um, Michelle and I, we kind of do what I want as long do as as we want with it, uh, as long as we just don't uh, get ourselves into crazy debt. You know, uh, so I guess. Yeah, that's kind of how that's the way I see so basically it. Basically, but then it. again, you know, that's what you're saying with the last. Yeah, part. we're gonna enjoy, enjoy it. it. Yeah, 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 enjoy it. But I mean, and if we don't, if we don't spend it all on something, then hey, it goes in the bank, and we start, and we start living off it type of thing. But yeah, that's how I see it, man. Hmm. That's interesting. I did, I did not itemize like you did uh, at all, but yeah, I think I would just think <laughs> I would start the business that I want the job at for myself. And now I'd be yeah. the boss. <laughs> um, <laughs> what you've always wanted to be. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I'm going to give you, this is an easy one for me. All right. Uh, I, I think it might be for you, but I'm I'm going to give you my answer and then we'll let that marinate. But I'm going with what are the best resources that have helped, have helped you along the way. And uh, this is really easy. This is a, uh, Two words, my soldiers. I, I don't, you know, we just. You're, you're lying. Yeah, we just read this. You're thing. lying. We read the thing from Huey, right? And like I said, Huey, Pagan, Wallace, Gotai, I am not the leader I am, especially them because they were like my first soldiers. I'm not the leader I am today. Oh, wow. I'm not the person I am today without those soldiers. Uh, providing the foundation of challenges for me. So yeah, my soldiers were the best resources that helped me along my way. I, you know what, man, I wish this is what we should have done. <laughs> we should have wrote these down and then yeah. sent them to each other. <laughs> this is a, the reason why is it is my first response to that yeah. was the soldiers. Yeah. That was my response. Exactly, man. Cause that's, I mean, you think about it, that is the best resource you can have. And, yeah. and, and, and let's just say this way. What if we were in a, some type of a nice corporation that took as good a care of us as the service has? Then I would say it would be my team members or the team members or the, the employees of that organization. Yeah. People are the best resource you could ever have. I truly and, – and that's the whole – to me, that's the whole thing about the instinctive influencer thing, man. Because not only do we try to influence them. They try to influence us or they do influence us and sometimes don't realize it. But the people, people are an amazing resource that always keeps coming back no matter what. It, it's not like it's a, to me, you know, like some resources, they end, uh, you know, uh, you run out of them. But with people, it's just, especially if you do the right things and you treat them the right way and you make them feel important, it's an amazing resource that just keeps regenerating it's awesome dude good yeah. good answer man <laughs> i feel like i'm on family feud now good answer good answer <laughs> Copyright family feud not well, as 100 people <laughs> 94 said the people <laughs> all right here we go what do you think your unique skill is that has helped you become successful so now this isn't about this isn't about a resource Ooh. this is about your unique skill do I have? Yeah, I this is about you now. I don't know that I have a unique skill. Uh, so I'm going to steal from you. And although I did not ever identify this as a thing, I'm going to say my charisma. I'm going to say based off of what you said to I me concur. after our trip to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, I'm going to say based off of the three-part charisma myth episodes, that yeah, my skill that has helped me become successful um, is my charisma. I love it, man. That's I I couldn't agree. I couldn't. I won't disagree with that. I think that's exactly your that's your skill. Your unique skill. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what's your unique skill, Brian? It's helped you to become 
successful? I think quick thinking and problem solving. And, and those two mesh together. It's not Ooh. like, it's not a, uh, to me, it's not something that they, uh, is separated. I'm talking about those, those things are put together. Quick thinking and problem solving together. To me, that's like one skill. It, it's just, it's allowed me to kind of like gain respect, so to speak, from seniors, peers, subordinates. Uh, and it helps me display, <laughs> it helps me display that. T- I can display that talent and people are like, wow, I didn't, yeah, wow, he's, able to do that wow that's awesome so that's that's what i feel like i yeah okay i i can see it i can definitely see it uh because i mean i've seen i've seen it in action working with you so yeah that's excellent that's all right um all right here we go are you Mm. ready drum roll please no this is a this is a good one pretend you are a ceo of a major company what are your top three priorities? And since I know that this is kind of in your wheelhouse, I'm going to go ahead and answer <laughs> first so that then you can give an answer that just really outshines no, mine. However, you just, you just provided my first one and in, in your last in, uh, your response, not the last one, the one before people. Yes. People are my first priority. All right. Because, again, without people, I mean, they're our number one resource. All right. So my second priority is growth through leader development, which then allows us to better take care of our people. And then uh, the third one, I really had a hard time coming up with a third one. So I just went long-term vision for the company. Like, you know, where do I see the company going? Where do I see my people going? Where's our focus? So I would say people growth through leader development and then long-term vision i mind i guess i you'd, you'd say mine are kind of the similar ones brother really um, i would think investing yeah okay. investing building and uh trusting investing building and trusting so i'd invest in the people mm-hmm. i'd build upon what they already know and then i'd trust them to do their job and to not become a micromanager Okay. Right. So those those would be like those would be three things that I would want people to know. Hey, listen, I'm going to invest in you, I'm going to build in you, and I'm going to trust in you. And I I think those um those are like those are what's going to help because you said it and I've said it both. And I think this can translate over into the civilian sector. Put the people first and then the mission will happen. You know, put the employees first and then they'll get the job done. So invest, build and trust. So if I invest in you, I build I build you up to whatever you need, and I trust you to get it done. I see no reason why uh, can't be successful. So you helped me with that third one that I struggled with uh, through trust. I one of my yeah. things, one of my priorities would be extreme ownership mm-hmm. to the lowest level. Everybody mm-hmm. take responsibility yes. for your actions. We're going back to our man Jocko. But yeah, when you said that, as soon as you said trust, I was like, that's my third one. Extreme ownership. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But even before Jocko, we could take it back to uh take to Lieutenant Colonel Moore. Uh, <laughs> my man. His, I mean, he's he pretty much he's I mean, he's pretty much the one who's he was saying it before, and, and people were probably saying it before him, even is that decentralized command, because that's kind of what it is too, right? Yep, absolutely. That's that's very much what it is. It's uh, in fact, I think it's part of uh, extreme ownership. It's in the book. It's in the book. Oh, that's back to the book. Well, you know what I meant. <laughs> exactly. I hate softball. I got a softball pitch for you, brother. All right. I hope so. What is your playlist like right now? Oh, man. All right. First, I want my audience. I'm actually going to open up my Amazon Music, and I'm going to look at the most recent thing I have. But I want the audience to not be so judgy. All right. <laughs> All right. So the last two stations that I listen to on, or I'll give you the last three stations I listen to on Amazon Prime, which I listen to the Amazon Prime quite a bit, Metallica which is a, it's kind of a mix. You'll have some Ozzy Osbourne. You'll have a lot of the older, you know, metal. <sighs> Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I got the Taylor Swift station. So you get a little pink, Taylor Swift, that kind of stuff. And then uh, the 21 Pilots station. 
which is pretty good too. I find myself singing wow. a, lot of, a lot of songs. I really, my one of my guilty pleasure songs is that Blurry Face by Twenty One Pilots. I really like that song, and I really love Heathens. But with the playlist, you get music similar to uh, those things. Yeah. So um, that's why I kind of yeah. like the I like the playlist on Amazon. So those are the last three that I have listened to so you know and, and really the metallica one so yesterday i did a good heavy uh back workout and so now you're talking like metallica rage against the machine acdc ozzy osborne like i said um some stuff i skip mm. i usually skip oh, stuff like yeah. Pantera and slipknot that's not really my thing alice in chains um nirvana that type of stuff so Yes, those are the three that I've listened to most recently, and I can also tell you those are probably the three that I listen to the most. And then if you rate your songs on Prime, like give it a thumbs up or thumb down, they have another playlist that's called My Soundtrack, and it'll play those things similar to things you've given the thumbs up to, and that one's pretty cool too. So there you go. Oh, man. (laughs) This should be interesting, Brian. I'm about to... I'm about to break yours down. I break mine down, not yours. I'm about to break mine down. I got 19 songs on this one playlist. I actually, and you're going to hate the name of it, the name of the playlist. Oh boy. It's, it's literally just called CrossFit. <laughs> so here's my, here's my, here's my CrossFit playlist. And I listen to this probably once a day, this playlist. I don't listen to all of it, but, and there's edited versions uh, that I listen to because uh, some of these songs, um, those of you listening, some of these songs may have explicit lyrics in them. So you can pull the, <laughs> on, uh, the edited version. Here we go. It's 19 songs. Here you go. Bugatti by Ace Hood, Not Afraid by Eminem, Alive by Little John, Out of Your Mind by Little John, Going Bad by Meek Mill, Back in Black by ACDC, Turn Down for What by DJ Snake, which has Little John in it. Sweet Dreams by Weezer. Nice for What by Drake. We Ready by Archie Eversole. Till I Collapse by Eminem. Kickstart My Heart by Motley Crue. We Will Rock You by Queen. Low Life by Future. Can't Hold Us by Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. Get Ready by Pitbull with Blake Shelton. Here I Go Again by White Snake. Rolling in the Deep, Adele, and Click, Click, Boom by Saliva. That is my, that is like my, I totally, like, <laughs> I put that playlist on, man. I get to work in the gym, and I go crazy, bro. Like, that's just, that's my thing. That is the most random, all over the place playlist. That's what you just call it, random all over the place. Because that's what that is. You are in- <laughs> it, it is. I mean, the only thing you need a little, get a little jazz in there, maybe some country in there. You'll be good to go, man. A little Florida Georgia line in there, and you can have all the genres. Like, <laughs> but it's all about. I haven't what found you. one yet that keeps me. <laughs> yeah. Well, so for us, like, because we like to work out and stuff, it's about what you know what gets you going. But then for me, it's a mood thing too. And we talked about that uh, way back on the music episode. It's a mood thing. It's what's my current mood yes. right now. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. sometimes I don't want to listen to music at all. I'll throw in an audio book. I finished We Were Soldiers Once and Young again uh this week actually on audio book. Uh I can tell you I can tell you uh, Ed yesterday. I I told you yesterday I did a PR on my front squats. I started this front squats at one point. I was I was around two twenty five, and then I was starting to jack it up. I started like that those those PRs with "Here I Go Again" by White Snake. I listened to that song twice. <laughs> I literally because that's how pumped that got me. I was like, you know, I'm like in my mind, I'm like, "Here I go again on my own," you know, just like going <laughs> to town in my brain, just like I'm going to do this on my own, you know, type thing. But that's it, bro. It's like there are some things that I need a good soothing Adele song to because she can just she just keeps me in that rhythm, you know? And there are other things I just need to feel it and just go after it, man. So I'm trying yeah, to think what I know is exactly one, what you mean. So for me, if I'm gonna listen to something multiple times, I'm doing a heavy, I'm going for a PR on whatever event, right? Squat, bench, uh deadlift, whichever. I'm probably going either Metallica fuel or <sighs> Yes. Uh, Prime Metallica Battery. I like those two songs um, to really get you like fired up. Now, in between, 
set you may even catch me do a little unforgiven by metallica to just clear my mind get myself focused um but yeah definitely metallica fuel and battery are like those hard drum hard hitting i am going to crush this 180 pound pr on the squad (laughs) he said 180 pounds whatever man what, 180 pounds in each hand with one foot on the ground? You're doing single leg squats, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. All right, my man. All right. You ready? Let's get it. This is a good one. I got. I have a good one. Uh, what do you wish you had known when you started out? What do you wish you had known when you started out? See, I, th- th- my question would be is started out doing what? Would it be this podcast or just start out in the army? You know what I mean? Like in my career. Yes, those two. So oh, you just did it. Those two. Okay. So my career, what I wish I had started out was that I would have paid more attention to what some people said and frankly went to school sooner. You know what I mean? Like started doing college and stuff at a lower, uh, at a, a junior yeah. rank versus now. Now it's like, because I stay so busy with my job, it's, I have to find free time to be able to actually get schooling done. Um, so that's one. And with a podcast, what I wish I'd have known then when we started to what I know now is I guess I would just say that the quality of the mics, the quality of the mics. Yeah, definitely. Uh, because obviously the Yeti is really nice. That's what we're using right now. You and I both have the same exact mic. Um, and yeah. I picked this up while I was here in Korea at the PX. Um, I had these other mics, but they just... They were cheaper. They just, they kind of, they distorted the sound and it's just, I, I like this. I wish I would have just went ahead and invested in a really good mic in the beginning because I can actually hear it when I, when we're, when I'm trying to do the editing and it actually sounds good with a playback. So what about you? All right. So for my career, I wish I'd have known the things we have discussed on the first 49 episodes. Ooh, I think that everything we have covered would have made me a better soldier and then a better junior leader and a much better senior leader than I am. I'm not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not great by any stretch of the imagination, but I think that the things we have talked about on this podcast really would have enhanced my uh, my career. I, I just, I truly do. Wow. Um, and yeah, that's why, that's why I put that one. I've been thinking about that one the whole time. And I was like, I'm going to get this one. Brian's not asking this. I'm asking this. <laughs> uh, for mm. the podcast. Oh man. I, I think that if, so it's saying wish you had known. I think that uh, I underestimated the um, scheduling for the two of us. Oh, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like I, so I get nervous when we only have, you know, we just went through a period right now we're building, but we just know a period where we literally was recording the episode that was going to probably air that week or the next week. Yeah. And um, oh, yeah. it's stressful for me. So I know it's stressful for <laughs> yes, you, it is. but I <laughs> wish I had realized because you know what I mean? Yeah. Because the cue uh build up is important and i'm hoping that over the christmas uh schedule because we get a little different schedule you know in our in the military i'm hoping that we can get up over a few episodes in the bank like 10 (laughs) because life happens right life happens um so yeah the scheduling uh difficulties that we've had i think i i wish i'd have known to expect that um especially when we were co-located because I really feel like that I didn't commit enough when we were co-located that we could have probably, we could have probably done at least five more episodes than we did when we were both at Fort Campbell. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. You know what I mean? And I wish if going back in hindsight, I wish we, I would have been like, Hey Brian, we need to record. Hey Brian. But I just didn't, I think for me, I didn't realize how serious that you were at the time. You know what I mean? Like, I kind of was like, okay, I'll do this thing because, you know, I trust Brian. Right. But I just, I didn't realize 
what it was going to be. And now, I mean, I'm excited by it, but yeah, I wish I'd have realized then it took it. I'd have jumped in all in, um, instead of being myself and being a little hesitant, like, uh, yeah, but instead, instead of like, my friend yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> uh, watching and, and then just play catch up. Like that's I, bro, you're the idea that you just said about the yeah. whole scheduling thing. That is like the most nerve wracking yes. part about this whole show. It really is. <laughs> like, it's like you've, yeah. cause you're always busy. I'm always busy. And then all of a sudden, like there's something going on on a weekend, maybe, or something has to happen. Uh, I mean, just yeah. for instance. And then we're committed. Yeah. You know, we're committed to our audience that, hey, we're going to get one every week. So then there's that pressure. Yes. Like, what happens if we can't get one this week? Like, yeah. So I wish I'd uh, I wish I'd understood that sooner for the podcast. <laughs> and I definitely think that episode one through 49, and I'm telling you that 51 through whatever is also valuable for somebody. Oh, yeah. Um, but I wish I'd have, I'd have known the inf- some of this information we're talking about, these books that we've read, uh, science-like ability. Uh, in particular, that one stands out. I wish mm-hmm. early in my career I'd have known these things. Oh, yeah. I, and I can't wait to the, the next two episodes after this one. Uh, if you remember correctly, we we dive into some how more stuff that's really important. So, I mean, it's just, oh, man, there's so my much man. out there. Man. Yep, I can't wait. First team. <laughs> America's <laughs> first team. He is a hero. He is just phenomenal. Yeah. All right. So here we go. I got another one for you. I li- right. I like this question and I already have I have an answer. I can't wait to hear what yours oh, is. Boy. I want to see if yours is anything like mine. What do you think is the most common reason for people failing or giving up? Oh man. Ooh, that's interesting. What do you think is the most common reason for people failing or giving up? I don't know, Brian. It's it's so many different reasons. I don't know what would be the most common. I mean, some people just don't have. Um, well, think about what you've observed. That maybe that. So let me tell you. I'm I'm going to tell you actually a little quick story about not giving up first. Uh, so young soldier, probably about 120 pounds, and she's out taking this new army combat fitness test, right? And she does the deadlift. And then she does, uh, what was the next, the ball toss. She doesn't do as well in the ball toss, but she gives it her effort. You know what I mean? Like she is really trying, um, uh, and it's diagnostic. So we're not talking about anything that's going to hurt her career yet. Uh, but it wasn't those, it wasn't any of the six of the, so of the six events, there was one event where she really caught my attention. So I, and she was in my lane. So she was testing just before me. Um, the sprint drag carry. So for those that ha- are not military, so basically it's a 25 meter down and back course. And every event you do 25 down, 25 back. So she takes off, does the sprint, comes back. Again, she's about 120 pounds. She grabs the handles to the sled for the drag portion. The sled is 90 pounds plus the couple of pounds for the sled itself. It, it's... It's not a very heavy sled, but the bottom line is there's at least 90 pounds on here, right? This soldier pulled and she tugged and she drove with her legs because you're dragging it backwards, first of all, which to me makes it more difficult because nobody does stuff like this backwards. Brian, when I tell you that soldier never, ever even showed a sign of quitting, she drugged that thing. Now, it took her forever. And we're gonna have to we're gonna have to work on her a little bit. She needs to improve her time, but she drugged that sled solid for about two and a half minutes. She did not quit at any point, and I was impressed. Again, yes, yeah, she didn't make the time that she needed to make, um, but she did. You know, she does the drag, and then you do like a lateral, and then you do the carry forty pound dumbbells in each hand. So now she's got eighty pounds in her hands, one hundred twenty pounds. Does not quit. Takes off. Does that. So, I so that determination, that drive. So I think that the real question is, what makes somebody like that have that drive? And now that answers the other question: is some people just lack that drive, but I don't understand why or where that lack of drive comes from. You know, some it could be. So for me, my drive comes from pride. 
I went out there with the idea that I'm going to take this army combat fitness test. I'm going to test it out and I'm going to do the minimums. I'm not out here to improve anything. And then I went out there and I absolutely did not do minimum of anything mm -hmm. because it's just not that. That's I, so when Brian says, Hey, how'd it go? I don't want to be like, well, I did the minimum because that, that would hurt my pride. And I think that a lot of it comes from that. So when you say, Hey, what causes somebody to not quit or fail? I think it's that drive. I think drive is key. If they lack that drive and that reason, what's your motivation? You know, you see an, TV when they're like an actor. Well, what's my motivation for this scene? Well, what's your motivation to succeed? What's your motivation not to give up or fail? And if you don't have that component, that that's it right there. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, um, that young lady you spoke of, did she make it all the way to the kettlebell carry? She did everything. Yep, she did the kettlebell carry. That's what I was saying. 80 what? pounds. Down and back. That's another 80 pounds. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just awesome, man. Yeah, 80 pounds down and back. Yeah, that's heart. That's a lot of heart. Yeah, no, excellent. And I mean, little, little short. Like she's very short, very small soldier. She did the leg tuck. Like I said, she she did everything. Um, where other people came out. So we talk about the giving up and failing. Other people came out. I was like, I can't do that. Mm. Like mm. literally, so mm. what my the a young lady that works in the office with me, she's the NCOIC of, you know, the testing. And she said people would come out and put their hands on the bar for the deadlift and be like, yep, can't do it, and just walk away. But one of us, because there's no consequence, right? Like, if they fail, it's diagnostic, and they're not taking it, just didn't take it serious. So, again, pride. I'm a senior leader, the senior leader, one of the senior leaders. I'm not going out there and putting 80 pounds on. You know what I mean? Uh, like, wow. Uh, now, granted, if you have some kind of limitation, physical limitation, a profile, something like that, all right, I'll give you that. But yeah, no, that young lady, and we'll just call her Q, super impressive. And she already is impressive at work. She's got a work ethic. She works hard. If you call her, it'll be done. Whatever it is you ask her to help you with or do for you, it will be done. That's the kind of. Uh, trooper she is and hopefully she can overcome this acft because that's the type of person we don't want the acft to force to have to get out of the military because she is small in stature but she's a monster and her heart so i said she's about 120 her heart is that of a 200 pound man like she's just got a heart that's awesome um, so yeah it was pretty cool to watch i enjoyed it and i told her that too i told her you were impressive that was amazing so what do you think? What, what's your thoughts on this <clears throat> common reason for people failing or giving up? Fear of failure. That is my answer. It's very short, very simple, very sweet, but I'll explain it. Fear of failure usually comes from failing previously. And then what happens is, is yeah. the fear of failure gets in our brain and then we don't want to do it. For instance, let's say, you know, you've lifted a lot of weight one time and it fell and you thought you were going to get hurt. Well, now you have that fear in the back of your mind that you could fail again and it could actually hurt you. Or that let's say that you were trying to complete a project by within a certain time frame but didn't get it done. Now you may be a little, bit, a little hesitant to volunteer to be a part of that because last time you didn't, you almost didn't make it or you didn't make it. Now you're scared that if you fail, that's going to make you look bad. So a lot of people are scared of fear of failure. And I can tell you right now, Ed, that's, that was, that's still is. One of my driving uh, motivations to get things done is the fear of failure. I, I I hate to fail, so I just I'll just push myself to the limits so I don't fail. Wow, so that's interesting, Brian. Because we're gonna go ahead. I want every all the listeners to focus on what Brian just said. I'm gonna ask the next question, and then I'm gonna answer it, uh, Brian. And I'm gonna use what you just said. All right. So the next question is, what's something you failed at? So, Brian, young soldier, primary leadership development course, hurt, went anyway, failed the APFT, absolutely failed, did not go to the clinic because I didn't want to get dropped from the course, drove on, took the retest, failed by a minute on the run, and from that day forward for a while, I feared the PT test absolutely panic uh just feared it 
because I was afraid that now if I fail back at the unit, one, I've got this mark on me because I failed at school, which that's still in my record, by the way. The bad 1059 dismissed me from that course is in my record. And you still um, get promoted to master sergeant. Wow. And still made master sergeant. It was a lot of work. Somebody once told me you're going to have to be great from this point forward. <laughs> um Actually, it was so funny enough. It was the commandant who was dismissing me because I knew him. We bowled on a lead together. Command Sergeant Major um, Arnett told me that. He said, you're going to have to be great for this not to hurt you later. And I never I didn't know what he meant until later. You know what I mean? But you do. You do. Absolutely. When you fail something. So I got this black mark. Now I'm back at the unit. Now the unit's already angry because I failed. Right. Because I got dismissed. Now I'm worried, oh, well, if I fail again, now we're talking about ending careers. And that is where that, like, now what I did is, as I would look for ways to be a sick call ranger. So now, oh, PT test. I was that guy, Brian. And this is something I've never told. I don't think I've told anybody. I was that guy that was like, oh, my gosh, PT test. I got to go to sick call. What's wrong with me? What can I get them to give me a profile for so I don't have to take this PT test? Um. And it took a leader, right, Ty, uh, Tyrone Hamlin, it took a leader to bring me back and get me back on track and get me to take a PT test, pass it, see that it wasn't it wasn't the end all. I was catastrophizing and move forward. And he's one of those ones that I always thank uh, when I get promoted. You know, you do the Facebook post and. He's one of the ones, and it, and it was this. So when you say, what's something you failed at, I go right back to the reasons. And when you said that, it immediately clicked in my mind that uh, fear of failing. That's, that was a good answer to the last question, wow. and it helped me with this question, Brian. So, wow. So my question to you, my friend, is what's something you failed at? All right, so I'm going to answer this, and I get goosebumps just thinking about it. Um it's probably going to correlate to one of the questions we have on here that I figured we were probably saving it to the end. And you probably know which one it is. I am. Um, yep. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to answer that one, but it's going to associate very much to, it. um, something I failed at. Uh, <laughs> like I actually get emotional when I talk about <laughs> it, man. Uh, being a dad to my oldest daughter. So I have an older daughter. She is 19 years old. She lives in California. She lives with her grandmother. Um, she, I was previously married, and she, during the in the divorce, she, she got custody of her. And I feel like I, I didn't put my career before her or anything like that, but I had to have a way to provide, right? And like. Every day I've beat myself. I, I think I beat myself probably up one, at least once a day thinking to myself how much I felt like I failed being her dad and not just her provider. You know what I mean? Like, and I, it's to the point where it affects my relationship with my children, my two youngest children, um, and how I interact with them that it's, I, I almost feel like I overcompensate sometimes. Um, but the good thing is, is, um, man, whew, Wow, dude, you really that one uh that one hit me hard because I'm a, it's kind of hard to hold in. Uh um the crazy thing is is we're so fortunate that she reached out to us, my wife and I, and she talks to my wife more than she talks to me, which is amazing because I want them to have a relationship too, because my wife is uh like one of her biggest worries. It it, it was I hope she's going to accept me for who I am type thing. You know what I mean? Like, because she's my wife, but it's mm -hmm. not her real mom. But she, tr I mean, she talks to her like she's her real mom, you know? And it's, it's so scary because, you know, you don't know what to expect at first, but now it's like, we've actually got some type of relationship. And even when we, when I get back to the States, you know, she's supposed to come visit a certain time and we're going to, you know, obviously we're going to play for plane tickets and, and stuff like that. that Cause I mean, it's the right thing to do to make sure she can come see us. But it's funny how it's worked its way out. And somebody once told me, and it was a good friend of mine, because I was like, I mean, I, I've i been tore up about this for years. When I say years, Ed, I mean, I went from 2004, April 8th of 2004 was the last time I saw her. And I didn't see her. I didn't physically see her again until her high school graduation this past year. 
May of 2018. Mm-hmm. That was, yeah. So I went, I went that long without seeing her. So it was like, wow, you know, and, and somebody had told me, he's like, she'll realize the truth and she'll, you know, she'll, you know, accept who you are and stuff like that. So, but that's, that's something I always felt like I failed at. I can't say it was a failure. I was a failure. I just, I felt like I failed and I didn't, I, 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 tr- and Michelle knows this. I, I could have done more. I feel like I could have done more. I could have pushed things and pressed things. But you remember that we just mentioned fear of failure. That's part of it. I was scared that I would completely lose everything. So I did, you know, uh, but that's, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's my, that's something a, I failed that I felt like that is it. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one, Brian. But it's amazing that you were able to, to you know to share that with our audience, and I, mm-hmm. and I think there's going to be a lot of value added for our audience listening to that because oh, yeah. yeah, I mean that is, I mean when when we when we talk about failing in in our in our jobs or you yeah. know, but now when you start talking personal life, like after the job is gone, that's still there. So I think it was crucial that you shared it. I really think it was awesome, and, and I. Yeah. You know, like, I said, <clears throat> excuse me, like I said, I hope that the audience realizes how difficult that was and they take something from that. And I think they will. Absolutely. All right, man. I'm going to move to the next one. We're not going to dwell upon that one. And I like this one because you kind of told me what you would put on it, but I want to hear your uh, actual podcast <laughs> answer. And you know exactly what I'm going <laughs> to ask you. All right. Here we go. <sighs> If your podcast had a billboard on the highway, what would be on it? Well, <laughs> don't you I feel say like the, fir- the first thing is, me. No, the first thing is it has to be attention grabbing. Um, so here's what I would I would put on there. I would put some huge influential people on there, some some photos. And I would just put uh, what something like what is influencing you or what's your influence and just have like, you know, like George Washington, Lincoln, Napoleon, some of these other guys who have been like historically, you know, perceived as great leaders, whether they were diabolical or not, they were still leaders. But yeah, what what is, you know, I'm going my history major military history guy. So let's say Dick Winters. Let's say how more George Washington and my main man, Leonidas, going, what's influencing you? And that would be it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I'm going to reference, uh, I'm going to reference a, a particular website. Um, it's the instinctive influencers.com. Uh, if somebody would like to go there, you can go ahead and look at that up. And if you go to uh, <laughs> the meet the, voices tab and you scroll down past my picture Uh-oh. and you go to a large picture of a <laughs> big burly man holding his poodle in a starbucks cup right there that's the picture i would put on it and then i would i would definitely put words kind of <laughs> of the nature of what makes him so influential well listen to the instinct of influencers <laughs> that's I think that would catch like somebody who would see that big giant dude with that little tiny dog and that, that frou-frou cup of coffee, which actually was my cup of coffee. I just had you hold it so I could take the picture. <laughs> I remember. Yes, you did. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> actually, um, so funny thing, Ed, um, on top of that, that that's that would be mine. You know, I, I would want to like I would want people to be curious of what Thanks. makes you so influential. Um funny thing, side note, I haven't finished it yet, but there may or may not be that same picture, uh, just the face of you. That's it, made into a sticker soon. So I'm just gonna let people know, either a sticker or magnet. I'm I'm still <laughs> jumping back and forth, and it's just oh that big God. giant Ed Haley smile with his sunglasses and his hat on. That's all I want, just that that face. And that way I can and it just won't go. In. That picture will not go away. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna tag it everywhere, my friend. Uh, yeah, there's going to be stickers everywhere. So, yeah, but that's uh, that is my <laughs> answer to the billboard. <laughs> oh man! Well, funny enough, we went to a market uh, yesterday here in Germany, uh, and when I carry the poodle, I get all kinds of people stop, want to pet her, looking, gawking, speaking in German, pointing at me. When my wife, she doesn't get it as much. So I'm pretty sure it's got to do with the 
size differential and the poodle being in a front hanging backpack as I walk through the Christmas market. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the Viking with his poodle. <laughs> yeah, we're going to leave my general alone. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. All right, so we got a few more right, here, Ed. So, what, what's yeah. your next pick? All right, let's go with an easy one. What is your death row meal? So that means the last meal we could ever have. Oh, man. Um, you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb here. I know exactly what my death row meal is going to be. It is going to be the okay. biggest, fattest, juiciest steak I could ever have. I'm going to die anyways. I mean, the steak's going to kill me too, but yeah. <laughs> I don't see I'm serious, it. man. I, don't see I haven't had it. <laughs> I've had a steak. I haven't had a steak since 2009. Like that's, that's oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Man, so, that's fair. That yeah, is yeah. fair. You're, Actually, you're gonna, no, I take it anyway. back. It was 2010. Ethan was born. Um, in 2010. And I remember the last steak I had. I actually, it was the night Ethan was born. Michelle and I, we met Michael Taylor. He had come uh, up from Arizona. We met him at, um, I want to say it was Texas Roadhouse or it was mm. Outback. It was one of the two. We met him there and I had a nice, juicy steak, but it wasn't, it was, it was a, a long, uh, a New York strip. So it wasn't really too fatty but i'm talking dude i'm talking like the 72 ouncer that you can get in like amarillo texas <laughs> like just the, the old big, 96er from, yeah what was that like movie? I'm, I'm probably <laughs> gonna die from i'm gonna die <laughs> from eating at least half of it before i finish the whole thing and then and you know, there's no more death row so yeah it, because it would absolutely kill me yes <laughs> hope you don't get a stay of execution <laughs> <laughs> what about you man what's your death row meal I'm a simple man. I also want a big, giant, thick, juicy steak cut up into cubes and put on my pizza. <laughs> Everything <laughs> is pizza. pizza. Yeah, uh, that's I just awesome, want a man. Pizza. I, no, I just want a meat pizza. We can throw ham, salami, whatever you want to throw in there, but steak. Just big cubes of steak. Yeah. I'm, wow. I'm a simple man. I love pizza. Love pizza. It's got to be brick oven, too, by the way. It should be made in one of those uh, big, giant ceramic egg-looking ovens. Um, heated to exact... No. <laughs> is the, is yeah. the Haley... And, and I, do, they, do the Haley clan, do, yeah. they, do they come from the uh, the Italian world or anything like that? We do not. We do oh. not. We're going to our homeland for Thanksgiving, so... Oh, you're Irish. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, no. But I want a big pizza and a big liter of mead on the side. A liter of what? Mm. Mead. Honey wine. Oh, mead. there you go. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. A big liter full of it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Uh, but yeah, simple man. Pizza. So right. was that me or was that you? I said it's, you I'm, it. it's my I turn to pick the next one. Yep, I yep. picked the next one. Oh boy! All right, so These are some tough it, ones. I'm I think tell what you. I think what we're gonna do is, yeah, I'm gonna go with this next easy one, and then it looks like the last three on this on this right here. Oh wait, we have two more over here. I forgot about. All right, so yep. here we go. So, what are you not very good at? Displaying emotions. It's easy. I'm not. I'm not good at emotion. Uh, it's something again that my wife and I have talked about. We have talked about it at length and the need to improve, but hey, I just am not good at. Um, I guess not displaying emotion. I'm not good at understanding emotion. I don't understand when somebody gets upset about a friend not calling them or speaking to them. That doesn't compute with me. It's like okay, whatever. Um, so th that that's definitely that's an easy one for me. Uh this one's tough for me. Um it's not that I'm I and that's the thing. There's probably a bunch of things that I don't notice that I'm not good at that somebody else may notice. Um but to me it's like ugh. um cause, and also it's like been my goal the whole time we've been doing this show every time we learn something new like I'm like, "Oh, I maybe I'm not so good at that. I'm going to try to do better with that." Uh but let's um I would definitely have to say 
at times, my procrastination. I, I'm not good at time management oh, sometimes. I would definitely say like that's a good one. And it's certain <laughs> things though. It's only certain things. Like when it when it comes to schoolwork, like I am the worst. I will put it off until the last minute and then do it. Like I, I still tonight before I go to bed tonight, uh, I have to take two tests <laughs> and record <Oof>. some video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, I mean it, it's just one of those things, man. Like I don't know. I'm I sometimes I suck at that. And it's just, and it's certain things too. It's like at work, I'm not bad about procrastinating. I'll just knock stuff out. But something like that, like, uh, I mean, it's like, hey, I already got a master's. Why am I working on another one? Oh, just it. Whatever, you know. I mean, I don't know. It's yeah. just, I don't know. Weird, but, but that's uh, that was my answer. So don't forget, we also have these other ones that are from a particular person. Um, yeah, I'm gonna grab one of them right now. And I actually, I, I mean, really, I'm gonna answer the first one. Hold the second one because the second one I'm going to be able to answer. The second one is an answer to the first one, too. Anyway, so this comes from the wonderful, excellent, great. Did I tell you my wife made me a mess of nachos? Like literally a whole cookie sheet of nachos last weekend. It was so amazing. Um, <laughs> so it comes from her. It comes from my wife. So it says, I myself prefer your discussion and interview shows. Rather than a lectures, charisma segments have been brilliant, in my opinion. I think that's what IMO means. I'm wondering what discussion and interview shows you have coming up and when we can ex- possibly expect them. So the first one, of course, will be recorded here in about two weeks. And Tammy's already tracking this, but I'm going to answer it for the audience. So the idea is that because we talked about the sibling throwdown being such a big thing for my siblings and I, We're going to sit down and we're going to talk a little bit about influence in our lives as three siblings, generationally, like a huge gap It's 12 years between me and my sister and then my brother and her a little bit closer, three years. Um, We all took different paths. We all live in different areas of the world. We all have different, very different careers. So I think the discussion will be good on that one so that we got this Haley sibling uh, episode. I have another interview that I'm going to talk about in the when the other question comes up. So we'll talk about that. And then a very good friend of mine uh, I grew up with, he is a coach in Southern Maryland for basketball, girls basketball, has been for a number of years. And I have approached him about possibly doing an interview, and, and he will. I just got to hash out the time. But we're going to talk about kind of the influence of a coach. Um He's been coaching girls basketball for a few years. What made him become a coach? What's uh, a way people can get involved in that? Because he is also on, I want to say, like the board of directors or something for the coaching association. So I think that would be a good interview for us to influence people to get out in their community and do stuff like that. Like what was his influence? What made him do that? And uh, if I can keep him PG rated, he probably can provide a lot of insight into who I am as a person. Like I said, we've, we have uh, shared some of the same problems. We've gone through some of the same pain together over the years. We we were very, very close growing up. Now we're, we're friends. We're great friends. We're just, you know, don't speak as much as, so those are the ones I have. I have three I'm I'm looking at right now on tap. I, I would love to be able to set something up with my, uh, new Facebook friend, Helen Ayers Patton. I have not approached her, so I can't say for sure that would even happen, but I think that would be a good interview too. So uh, you got anything on tap, Brian? What are you thinking? Uh, I'm definitely thinking, so talk about interviews and shows like, and she enjoys that. And I think, I think it's because of how we connect with those types of shows. Uh, I'm going to start off with saying like that I have a, as a gentleman that I've, I worked with here, he is now in another organization but he's still there in the area matter of fact i just uh, as a matter of fact i just ran into him at the gym yesterday and i told him hey because i'd asked him hey do you mind doing an interview um and i said hey are you still good for that because i'd love to still do it and he's like oh yeah definitely um and and i think it's gonna gonna take a look at he's, he's a professional soldier but on the side he also has a business he's trying to run and and on top of that the people he's running that business with they also have a company uh, podcast that they're doing. So 
the podcast Ooh. is off of that business. So he's also, he's already in, and I actually gave him some advice of the things that I've been doing or I did. He actually went and got the same Yeti mics we have, Ed. Uh, <laughs> so he's kind of one, he's one that we've kind of looked at. And then um, I, well, we've already kind of recorded them, but they, as of right now, because we're, when we're recording this, they hadn't, it hadn't been released yet. And I think, it's funny how it, you know how everything worked out, but we just did the we had the, uh, the Furman and 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 Rick Williams or Bitter Ninja. Uh, yeah, it wasn't really an interview; it was more of a discussion. It's things like that I really enjoy because it literally and that's all that show was. It was just a it's just a discussion. It was just four guys just talking about leadership, you know, things like that. So, you know, I, I guess I want to say that once I get to Colorado, I, I've got quite a few. Uh, friends there too who i'd like probably sit down and have a chat with um but i want to ask the next question because i think this that i think that's uh, a key one too all right yeah. so you guys give a lot of information on leadership and influence from a male perspective being that i am a woman when can we start to hear more about the impact influence and leadership styles of women and there was a whole laundry list of individuals that uh she put on there and i i think that one that you talked about that's going to be one of those ones. And I think, I think, uh, I would definitely say that if, if I would look back at the questions that we just, we just kind of went through and it said, what are you not very good at? I think that's definitely one of the, I'm going to answer that question with this one is we haven't, I, I feel like we haven't done a, a justice yet by saying, you know what, we need to try to get more women on the show too, because I mean, we had, you know, we had Captain Holtz. That was kind of cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Prior to that, I think it was just our two wives, which we're also in the plans of trying to have those two back on, uh, which would be kind of cool also. Uh, yeah. But I think I think that's definitely something that you know you and I had. I mean that that may that's a that's a goal we can set and we can like okay well, how do we how do we further develop that and and we make it a well rounded show so everyone feels like they get something out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think this one's interesting, too, because like I, I get where Tammy's coming from. Um, and I, I do think that we 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 can look at that. Um, we did kind of. So, you know, last she talked about the charisma segments. Right. And the charisma segments we got from the uh, from the podcast, the was the art of manliness. Yeah, I don't I don't remember the, name of the podcast yes. exactly. But I think that's it. Um, but the the articles were also based on the charisma myth um, and the author for the, those books were, was a female. So maybe we, you know, we could have probably done better. We could have probably just broke down the charisma myth book and, and done that. But uh, I think the, the key to this question from Tammy is she's really given us something to work forward, uh, work towards in these next 50 episodes. So the reason I said I was holding one of my interviews off is so I have a very good friend of our family, um, Charmaine Richardson, and I am trying to set something up. She is working on a nonprofit. And um, so Charmaine has an interesting story. I don't want to give away too much. I just promise my listeners, our listeners, that if you want to talk about somebody who has a influence, this is Charmaine is it. Uh, easily Charmaine's story could also appear on my favorite mm -hmm. uh, other favorite podcast, the team never quit podcast. Very easily. She would fit in over there. Uh, and, and as we record this, she, so she is um, in a wheelchair yesterday. She won the uh, miss. Let's see. I got to get it right. Miss wheelchair, Maryland 2020 pageant. So congratulations to her. Um, it, it was an awesome thing that she's very uncomfortable about doing, but she did it. And this is kind of her whole story is like that. So that is going to be an interview that I'm working on. Hopefully I can get it where Brian, I, the issue really is she's in, in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area. Brian's in Korea. I'm in Germany, quite the uh, time zone swag going on there. So if we can work it uh, before Brian goes back to the States, when we will, if not, we will get it after, but I think it'll be a great interview and a very, very influential uh, young lady. And I know that my wife would 100% agree with that, um, knowing her story. She's just awesome. So th that that's some things. And, yeah, we need to look forward look uh, into some others, Brian, I think. I think that uh, Tammy brings up a good point. Absolutely, man. I agree. So what do we got next, Ed? What's the next one? 
I got three right there. All right. Well, I don't have three questions. You have three questions. I have two. <laughs> uh, so this is this is. I think this one's an interesting one as well. What's something you think the Instinctive Influencers podcast does for the audience? I would say it helps open up ideas of how they can possibly improve where they are now. Okay. You know, and we've said it before. It's like we, I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider any, any person that listens to the show as they, they aren't anything that we talk about and we're going to improve everything about them. I think they all have strengths. They all have weaknesses and they probably share those with you and I, and they're able to develop off of the different topics. For instance, you just mentioned, we just had a three part series on charisma it's funny. Your wife said pretty much the same thing. My wife said she <laughs> loved it. She enjoyed it. She felt like we were really connecting on that. And we were able to kind of display what it means. Um, and, and if you go into uh, the different discussions we've started to have um, with just whether it be about a book, uh, the next few episodes coming up, I, I adore the idea that we, that you kind of came up with and we ran with, uh, I love it. Um, so I think what we're doing is we're opening up, doorways for people to walk in and out it's that opportunity to become a better influencer does that make sense no it, it really does um and and my answer is very similar just uh, short and sweet um we are arming them with tools to be influential we're arming them with um some tools to make them great leaders influencers to have an impact yes to leave a footprint, whatever way you want to say it, but we are arming them. I feel like, like I said earlier, when we talked about the question, um, what do I wish I had known when I started out? Like, I mean, I'm a 20 year, 21 mm -hmm. plus year soldier. And I wish I had known some of the stuff we've talked about in episode one through 49. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I love it. All right, here, Ed, here you go. All right. What advice would you, would you give someone who is about to take on a leadership role at work? Mm. Hmm. I would tell them, there's a couple of things, but mainly be humble. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Mm. And read. Read, read, read. Knowledge is power. And if you read leadership books or you know again i can still go back to that same thing with something with something you wish you had known when you started out i wish i'd have known the value of lifelong learning and reading uh when i started out so mm. yeah those are the things i definitely you got to check your ego you got to be willing to ask for help and i think that the, the knowledge is power thing would work great for you if you're just starting out in a leadership role oh, i couldn't agree with you more man i would definitely i think if uh, if you're unaware of what servant leadership is, I talk to soldiers all the time and I'm like, hey, you ever heard of servant leadership? Like, oh, what's that? Well, I need you to look it up and then come back and let me know. But if you're unaware of what servant leadership is, you got to look it up. Mm -hmm. You got to figure out what it is because I think it matches what you said, humility, right? And uh, And then understanding that you don't know everything and you need to read and get into stuff and figure out things. Uh, I also, I would even fall back on the answer I gave earlier. And it was about, I'm going to invest, I'm going to build the people around me, and I'm going to trust that they can do the right things. And you kind of have to go into a new leadership role uh, with that in mind, because if you go in, I'm going to tell you right now, if somebody goes into a new leadership role and they think they're going to walk in and change everything, you, you already started off on the wrong foot. You went the wrong direction. You should have never went that way. You need to observe first. That is your job is to observe and see what's going on because I guarantee you there was a reason why it's still functioning. That means there's stuff that's working. So don't you don't want to go in and start changing it. But so observe. But hey, invest in people, build the team, and trust them that they'll do what's right. And show all that humility. Ed, you had it, man. Yeah, I, I, it is. And I think that that's something that the, you and I, you know, in the military, they teach us that uh, – as leaders, when you go to a new position, new place, kind of take a moment and observe. Don't go in guns blazing. Now, of course, when you're a junior, junior leader in the military, a sergeant like E5 type, you're not gun blazing anyway because you're really you're in charge, but you're not top of the food chain. Then when you start getting promoted and you get into a senior level. So for you, 
you are the senior uh, NCO in your organization, in your company, not your battalion, but your company. Um, so you can't come in guns blazing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you have to take a yeah. moment, yeah, yeah. observe, make I, for me, I've always thought make subtle changes first and then in, gradually increase. Cause you can make those subtle changes, see how they respond to those subtle changes. And then you can go guns blazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Break yeah. out the Tommy I, gun. I love <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, I laughed real quick, man, because in my organization, <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I, I have to title it a little bit different. I'm the senior enlisted position, but I do have two star majors in my company <laughs> who definitely outright me. So. Hi, Brian, it's Tammy. I have a question for you for my sister. Um, her question is like you, I have a child with autism. My question is, how does he influence you in your everyday life? And how do you, in turn, influence him? Well, Tammy, since you sent this question in to uh, on, on our closed Facebook page, uh, I've been thinking about it. I told you a minute ago. I've been thinking about it ever since you sent it in. And I, as a, it's, it's, it seems to be a convoluted answer, but then again, I can make it really simple. Uh, how does he influence me in my everyday life? I've had to learn how to re-communicate with people because a child with autism doesn't, they don't always understand what it is you're telling them. So you have to, if they don't understand, you have to figure out another way to talk to them. Right. Uh, for instance, if I say, Ethan, stop pulling my leg. He's like, but I'm not touching you, dad. And he doesn't realize that I'm actually kind of, I'm using that in, in a sense to where, you know, stop you know, joking, stop, you know, stop trying to lie to me or something like that. And, and Ethan's not one to lie because he, I don't even think he understands it at mm -hmm. all. Um, but I've learned how to communicate with people and then identify. And that's, a, this is the other crazy thing I've learned. Like when I start talking to people at work, I'm like, Oh, they have a touch of Asperger's it looks like, or, you know, so you start actually seeing different things and it makes you respect people more and to right. learn how to deal with people because of the way I was raised. I can't raise my kid like that. I cannot raise my kid the way I was raised um, because we were uh, forced uh, through basically hitting or something, you know, of that nature. Right, like, right. so I, if you, if you were to describe our childhood, it was, I, I think, it, and I'm not, and I've said this before on the show, I don't blame her uh, for the things that happened, but it was very abusive. Ethan could not be raised like that. He can't be raised in that atmosphere. So Michelle and I have gone through a lot of different things and we've, we've had a, a amazing, uh, behavior health, uh, specialist who has helped us learn. And it's, it's crazy because now, now I'm, I think he's teaching me how to be a better leader. Right. That's what I think. Um, and then you taught, you said, and how do you in turn influence mm -hmm. him? Um, Every day is a challenge. Uh, for instance, Ethan does CrossFit now on his own. Uh, he wants to work out. And I think it's because he wants to, he, Michelle says he wants to be like his dad. And that, like that right there, it's insane. Because uh, I can't, I would never let Ethan join the army. Right. You know, right. like I love everything about it, but it, I, it would destroy him. Mm -hmm. it, and I'm not saying that he couldn't handle physical. I just, I, I know the things we go through and it would be complete torture to him. And I could never allow my, my boy to be tortured. And it's, it's more of a mental. Right. No, I can see that because he's, he's, he's so empathetic. Mm -hmm. Like he feels mm -hmm. everything that he does. Yes. Um, and so I totally agree with you on that. There's no way that, that he would, he would be able to survive in the army. Not at all. Now, do we hope we wish him the best and he, he grows up, you know, he kind of, cause you don't grow out of it. There's no such thing. Uh, right. No, he no. learns how to cope with it. And do we want him to learn how to cope with it? Absolutely. I would love to Ethan one mm -hmm. day to be married and have children. Um, but I'm also, right. uh, I'm also willing to say, Hey, he's getting the guest quarters the rest of my life. And I, he's my buddy. So, you know, I mean, I'm his dad, but he's also my little buddy and he could always, he always has a place with me, you know? So it's, yeah, I'm, and your sister, your sister's name again, Tara, Tara, how old is her? child um matthew is 
Oh my goodness. Matthew's five? Yeah, I think he just turned five. Well, Tara, Matthew's going to have struggles and you as a mom, I promise you, it's not going to get easier. It's going to just get tougher as they get older. Um, but just listen to him. Listen to his noises. Listen to who, you know, listen to his heart because they do have a big tender heart. And I would tell you, just keep pressing. Don't stop. Be relentless. He needs to go through whatever therapies they have him do. I, what, if I could tell you um, years ago when Ethan was diagnosed at a young age, uh, we were worried he was never going to speak or anything like that. And here he is. He can hold her. He holds a conversation and it might be about Minecraft or <laughs> something that he loves, but it, it's just amazing. Uh, just the other day, actually two nights or a night ago, his sister was trying to sleep in my, in my wife's room with my wife. And, and this is Ethan. I love his, I love his, just how he is open and she's Michelle says, well, why don't you add Ethan? You can sleep in his room. And she, she was like, oh, I don't know. Ethan's like, you can sleep in here, but no snoring. And also I may fart tonight. So, I mean, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> he's so like, yeah, it, he's who he is. So Tara, um, just keep pressing forward. I guarantee you, if you're anything like your sister, you're going to do great at it. So. Awesome. It's awesome. Uh, that thank, but I think, I think Tara for bringing it up. It's one of those things we don't talk about a lot on the show and it's, uh, I would definitely tell Tara why we, I don't talk about so much on the show on the side if she ever wanted to know, but I, it's not something mm -hmm. I would put out on the show. If that makes sense. Right. So some things that stay private. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on, Tammy. My pleasure. <laughs> what do you work at? Chick-fil-A? <laughs> <laughs> you better stop that. I'll give you back to Ed now. All right, here we go. Well, there you have it, Ed. We just went through a whole, what, 22 questions. What is it about you and I in 22? I don't know. Oh, it's because um, we love our soldiers. Yeah. Uh, but 22 questions for episode 50. It is in the books. In just got to wait books. for it to release, which... Yeah, man. I mean, I can't wait to I can't wait to see what the next fifty to a hundred to whatever how far we ever take this uh, go. But I mean, that a lot of good questions. Um, you know, I wanted to throw out real quick because you know you mentioned your wife had given you some questions. Well, I tell you that Michelle threw in a solid uh, block of these questions to us also. Yeah, uh, I, <laughs> and then a few others come from other areas, um, and then the fact that we uh, we actually got to read some stuff from people who have emailed us or sent us text messages or, you know, or messages on Facebook. Like that, that's really cool. You know, I enjoy it. Um, yeah, no, this was, uh, yeah, this was pretty cool. I actually, I really, <clears throat> I think the, uh, the final question, I'll be is the start show, my friend. What's that? Oh, oh no, nah, man. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what we we'll see what the we we'll see what the audience thinks. I, yeah. I, you know, talk to your wife, see what she thinks about it. I mean, I was I was really happy to hear her, and you brought her on to ask it because it was from her sister Tara, and that's that's just awesome. I I hope Tara still listens uh, even after this, and maybe we'll I don't know we may develop a show a little bit and kind of dive into some other things. You know, um, there's a certain person back in the states I've been wanting to do an interview with, uh, and that person has been a part of Ethan's life since we knew this. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll even talk to her a little bit and it'll help out other families because like, I think that would be amazing. We could talk all day long about influence. Yeah. We could talk about influence at work, but when it comes to the yeah. house and the home and the family, like that is like, you know, just as well as I do that, like that is like that core thing because I guarantee you, Ed, if your if your brother and sister at some point would have just been like, "Oh, this is stupid. I can't believe you." You know what I mean? They were, but they mm -hmm. listen to the show. You know what I mean? They support you, so it's like, wow. You know, even if I'm not influencing anybody else but my brother and sister, I'm going to do it. You know, my wife, she supports me all the time. My brother, my little brother, has sent me messages a couple times about it. Um, it's just, it's what really kind of makes the show what it is is the people around us. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that the, I think your idea of a episode that there you go. There's another interview episode, right? I think that would be I think that would be a very good idea. Um, yep. oh, and it, it meets it meets that criteria that uh, that Tammy asked about with uh, a woman's perspective, 
which was great because I think we need to have it. Um, but also kind of touches on that. It really touches home with the, uh, the special needs community too. And I think that's important. I mean, yeah. Um, so, you know, like, like I said before, I had to go back to the States. My cousin struggled with muscular dystrophy, um, for years and years. And so, I mean, I think it's important awareness. Um, like I said, I want to interview Charmaine again, we're getting into the, uh, into that community and trying to bring some knowledge and, and stuff out there. So, um, yeah, those will be, uh, those will be pretty stellar interviews. Oh man. I'm excited about these next 50. (laughs) All right. It's going to be awesome. I mean, we've got all kinds of stuff in the, in the, uh, queue for it. Uh, so with that, Ed, is there anything else you want to tell the audience about before we kind of close this out? Uh, man? I don't think so, Ryan. You say that like I should have something. I do. I, I definitely oh, want to. <laughs> what I like to talk about possibly is how people can actually connect with us. You know, they can connect with us through. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got that. Oh, okay. There you go, brother. <laughs> I got that part. I, you said The way you said it, I was like, is he getting it? Did I forget something? <laughs> so the audience can find us on uh, well, multiple platforms of social medias on Twitter, on the uh, Instagram, or the book, Facebook as well at 101 Influence. Uh, we have the closed Facebook group. Then get in there. Um, I challenge them to get in there, sign up. Get into the group and get that group firing. Get some questions out there. Get some conversations going. Um, some ideas. Let's let's get some ideas. Go to the closed Facebook page and throw out some ideas for these next fifty episodes. Because yeah, we have ideas for some right now ourselves, but we don't have fifty ideas. So why don't you help us out? Uh, it would be greatly appreciated. So yeah, on all those platforms, check us out, Brian. Not you, Brian. I mean, they can check us out. I'm sure you already do. <laughs> <laughs> i listen on the weekend uh, all week okay so especially when i'm editing hey so i gotta throw out a task man because we've we, we can't go without doing this here's the deal we got a really good uh task not too long ago and it was actually answered by tammy ed's wife and <laughs> she had mentioned about empathy and we had talked about it through the show and then I, from what i gather She's also talked to Ed a little bit about it. And she gave me a great idea about another good topic to hit upon on the show. So this is what I'm asking from you, the audience. Episode 50's task is what are some things you like to hear about or learn about? That's that's it. What are some things you want to hear about or learn about? And I think just put out what you think. We will develop wherever we can. We'll pull from different places. I mean, we've got our ideas, but we want to, you know, be able to help kind of spread that knowledge. Or if you have something that you know is really good and you want to share it, let us know. We'll we'll share it with you. So, well, with that, Ed, uh, they can reach at not only can they reach us on there, but they can send us private messages whenever they want. Yeah, to. You know, they can yeah. find us if you if you go join the group, you're going to find Ed and Brian. So it doesn't matter. Um, But I have nothing else for the show. This has been a lengthy one, but I think it's going to be a really good one. And I think the next couple ones are going to be amazing also. Yeah, I can't wait. With all that, I am Brian. And I am episode 50, Ed. (laughs) And this has been episode 50 of the Instinctive Influencers podcast. We thank you so much for listening. Have a great day.